And uh, a friend of mine, John Muir from Picto, his uh, close friend Hector McKenzie, sort of, I guess, grew up with uh, Willard Kitchener McDonald's. His name jumped off a train on the way to World War II, and they never really found him until years after. So it was a book written about it. It's quite a moving story. People started to go in and visit him as the years moved along. And the date that we went out there was the day we were uh, sort of walked through the woods and came across this little cabin. And when he jumped off that train, he knew where he was going. It was an old bear hunting cabin in the woods. Tiny little thing. His, the window was actually the door. You know, he climbed in and out of that. And we walked up to the, the cabin. He was nowhere to be found. But Hector said, you know, he, he would have heard us coming <laughs> from a, wa a while back. So he's shy. And so he was saying, hey, Ketch. Hey, Ketch, I brought some boys here to see you. Come on out. He just kept, kept you know, calling him. And, and uh, just as humble as anything, here comes Willard. He comes walking back to the cabin. He's just very soft-spoken. He sat, just re real gentle soul, just sat there. And, uh, you know, we were trying to get some conversation going. He was very quiet. And uh, I noticed some, uh, I said, you must uh, have some encounters out here. You know, you see many bears. He goes, oh, yes. The other night, one ripped the door off my cab. And got up on his legs and let off an awful roar. There's just some manure over there. It was like, you know, eight feet from his cab and there's a big pile of beer manure. So uh, we played some songs for him, and then he played some for us. And uh, his, his, his music was, was not really what we'd say influenced heavily by uh, Top 40. It was, pretty <laughs> <laughs> it was his own. It almost sounded like uh, music from sort of the Middle East or something. And, and uh, he, had, he sang this song where he did all these voices, like the, the, the father, the mother, and the baby. And he, and he did, sang a lot of stuff in falsetto. And uh, just very passionate and telling stories and through the through these songs, it was a crazy experience. So afterwards, um, John and I wrote this song for him, but we never finished the chorus. We never finished the chorus until we heard there was a search and rescue uh, team looking for the Hermit of Gully Lake. It was on the news, and uh, I guess he had the flu or he was sick. And his family, um, with the best intentions, wanted to get him into a hospital. And some of his old friends, like Hector, were saying, if you take him into a hospital, he will die right away. He's never really been exposed to all the things that we have been. And uh, so you better just uh, leave him there. He's more apt to be able to heal himself. He's had worse things than a cold, for sure. But anyway, the search and rescue team was trying to find him, and he was on the run. He was terrified they were going to make him go to the hospital. He just kept running and running and running. When we heard this was happening, we uh, wrote the chorus of the song. And, uh, I had a request to do it. I hope I can remember it. I tried to remember it earlier. My oldest guy, Judd, he, he uh, was helping me a little bit. <laughs> See, they grew up here in my music, because Sarah used to play it for them when they're going to sleep every night. They're from their kids. Sun and rain surrounds him. Let 
Just 